If listening to 24-bit audio makes you feel better, or if a particular 24-bit remaster is verifiably better mastered than its 16-bit analog, have at it. But Blanket claims that 24-bit audio is better than 16-bit audio are useless without first defining what you mean by better. Internet fora brim with bold claims, praise, and stupefyingly misleading recommendations. As a semi-objective reviewer, I call out audio gear that fails to perform up to its high-res marketing. Largely, that is a purpose of the audio data portion of my website. The latest dedicated audio device to fail this is Fios M6. The most famous to fail the test is Sony's NWZX2. The de facto opinion is that 24-bit audio is better and that high-res sounds better. Evidence for both assertions is, for lack of a better descriptor, mystical at best. For my part, I am sorry. I have failed to consistently remind my followers at Touch My Apps or Headphonia, Headphonics, Omimage, Headfi, and now Futaku Lounge that on paper 24-bit audio delivers incredible performance, but in actual use 24-bit music is restricted by too many external variables to be of much, if any, non-marketing or post-production use. Consider your listening habits. Do you listen to music at low or high volumes? Do you listen to it in, in quiet or loud environments? And because duds do exist, through what equipment do you listen to it? I'm an IEM guy myself. Ultrasone, Grado, Noble, Fit Ear, and the like might be in my ears any day of the week. When it cools down, finally in Tokyo, uh, I'll wear headphones, something like an ES10 or perhaps uh, Edition 8 or something like that. But no matter the headphone, I set my music to safe listening levels. I do this because I'm a music lover and I want to keep my ears healthy enough to enjoy music for a long time still. Theoretical advantages of 24-bit audio over 16-bit audio are dynamic range, noise, stereo separation, and distortion. Typically, each of these is described in the logarithmic on a decibel scale. In other words, the louder, the better. Files with higher bit depth may possess higher dynamic ranges. This is completely dependent, of course, on how and where the original instruments were recorded and how well the recording signal is reproduced in playback. Theoretically, a 44 kilohertz 16 bit audio file can possess a dynamic range of 96 decibels, and a 44 kilohertz 24 bit audio file can possess a dynamic range of 133. In a perfect universe, instruments reaching those values would be trivial. But that's not our universe, and we can't forget about noise introduced by the recording and mastering environments, noise introduced by your, your playback equipment, and of course, noise in your listening environment. Even in a perfect universe, a true 16-bit audio experience would necessitate listening to music at at least 96 decibels, a volume at which the government of Canada will limit your daily maximum exposure to two hours after which it is thought to cause hearing loss. Died in the wool 24-bit audio supporters would have to listen to sustained volume levels of theoretically perfect recordings louder than that to notice any difference to Redbook 16-bit. Or they would have to listen to theoretically perfect recordings louder than 120 decibels to notice a difference against the theoretical limits of dithered 16-bit audio. At those levels, you would lose your hearing in short order. Speaking of which, to varying degrees, hearing loss is a reality for most of us. Are we even capable of discerning 96 decibels of dynamic range to begin with? RMAA is, is useful in illustrating qualitatively objective differences from device to device, at least against a bit limited theoretical benchmark. It won't tell you how a device sounds or even if you will like the sound of that device. It does show how well a device conforms to the limits of a suite of theoretical tests and therefore indicates potential output quality of a device or a recording. It's not pro, it's not the best amateur thing around, but it's easily available and results from RMA stuff are easily, basically. For the following RMAA results, I matched the below devices to the maximum volume at which I'm comfortable listening to Afex Twins selected ambient works 85 to 92 through an iPhone 4S. The headphones were a pair of Audio-Technica ES7s. Because the album is uh, particularly quiet, I had to bump up volume more than I would normally on a newer recording. 
On the iPhone 4S, that volume was seven steps from maximum. Then using a calibration signal, I matched the volumes of an iPhone 6, an AKJR, and an MS AK100 to the same iPhone 4S level. My ADC was a Lynx Hilo. After ensuring a mean output difference between all devices was no more than 0.5 decibels, I tested the same 24-bit audio signal through each device. Let's check out the dynamic range of a 24-bit file when played back at comfortable listening levels. Does it crack the 16-bit ceiling? When calibrated for normal listening levels, not even the exemplary MS AK100 comes close to hitting the 16-bit ceiling. It's also interesting to note that no device gains a definitive upper hand across the board. This is in spite of massive differences between the devices when tested at maximum volume. Unlike recorded music, whose loudness and dynamic range vary with the passage, RMAA tests only for theoretical upper limits of sampling frequency and bit depth at which the signal was recorded. At normal listening levels, my target 24-bit audio file called target 2444, whose potential dynamic range is 133, dropped to a tested maximum of 90.5 decibels. This is far below the 96 decibels theoretical dynamic range limit of 16-bit. Even in a perfect world where perfect instruments were recorded in a vacuum by exemplary hardware and then played back through equally perfect devices, 24-bit audio would still have to be enjoyed at volume levels way beyond my threshold for pain and I imagine yours. This of course raises the following question. With ears ringing, could I, or anyone for that matter, distinguish the difference between 16-bit and 24-bit audio? 24-bit audio is a wonderful tool whose theoretical limits push the development of better and better playback and recording equipment. But as far as I see it, it offers no real-world benefits to the listener beyond what placebo transcribes. Our brains are wired to believe narratives. It's part of our evolution. But willing patterns of self-deception can be problematic and, uh, and dangerous. Suffice it to say, your favorite 24-bit music isn't a record of the theoretical limits of the format, and it won't be listened to at volumes which demonstrate those limits. If played back at normal listening levels, 24-bit audio cannot go beyond or even close to 16-bit ceiling, what are the actual advantages of 24-bit audio over 16-bit? I reckon they're basically none. Now, there is the chance that a high-res file will be better recorded than its lower 16-bit res original or the original album that came out that was then remastered, that's possible. And in that case, that thing probably does sound better. But at the same time, a 16-bit remaster of the same should sound just as good through the same playback device at the volumes you normally listen to music. Finally, of particular note, high-res audio players playing back audio at comfortable listening levels offer no demonstrable benefit against a good smartphone, at least on a test bench. That is to say, they don't offer technically better sound quality. Do they sound better to you? They may. I tend to prefer a good high-pass filter, which most smartphones lack, at least at the DAC level. So there is that, but then again, there's bound to be an app that just about approximates that experience. Thank you guys for watching another video. If you want to support this channel, leave a thumbs up and a subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment. Uh, if you don't like the channel, hit two thumbs down, you know? like that, leave a comment, I wanna hear from you as well. If you wanna like support it, you know, like this, buy a hat, it's 20 bucks shipped wherever you are, hand drawn, serial number, all that. The other thing you can do is hit up my Patreon. In return for your support, I give you beautiful wallpaper images uh, in either 4K composite, 4K or 1080p. Please subscribe uh, if you wanna share, if you wanna criticize, whatever you do. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and uh, hit up my Patreon. I'll see you guys later, thank you very much been good.